Welcome to the most important lesson in all of Trig in Grade 11. This is special triangles. Now, why do we need these special triangles that I haven't shown you yet? Well, there are some certain values for Trig that we need to know. Specifically, the sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, and cotangent of 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, and every other degree that follows this pattern. So in other words, increments of 30 degrees and all increments of 45 degrees. So why do we need to know these? You will understand the further you go on in mathematics, but for now, just realize that these are important and they're also really nice to solve and work with. So let's talk about these special triangles. Here's a triangle. This is a 45 degree triangle. And how we construct this is we say, okay, let's take a triangle with two equal edges that are say one and one. So these are going to be the same length. It's going to be an isosceles triangle in sort of this sense where we have the 90 degrees between that. And then we want to create this hypotenuse which we know according to the Pythagorean theorem is going to be the square root of one squared plus one squared. And this is equal to the square root of two. And by the nature of being an isosceles triangle, we get that these two angles are 45 degrees. So this is how we construct the triangle. Now, when we want to find the sine, cosine, and tangent. Let's write out the formulas here for this. You might remember a nice little thing called SOHCAHTOA, where the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So the sine of 45 degrees is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. It doesn't matter which 45 degree angle you take, it's going to be the same. So this is going to be 1 over the square root of 2. Cosine of 45 degrees is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So this is also going to be 1 over root 2. And the tangent of 45 degrees is going to be the opposite over the adjacent, which is just going to be 1. So these are the values of 45 degrees. It is sort of a good idea to memorize these. In fact, it's going to speed up your calculations a lot on your tests and stuff. However, knowing how to construct the triangle and drawing out the values are much more important. So on a test, at the top of your test, what you should do as soon as you get it for trig or anything in math 11, 12, calc 1, 2, or 3 is draw this triangle, put a 1 here, a 1 here, and now you can deduce the rest that, okay, if this is 90 degrees and these legs are the same, then these angles must be equal, so those must be 45 degrees, and then by Pythagoras, this last side should be root 2, and then you can figure out things as I just did for you. So that's going to be a good trick. Now, you have to also be able to do this for this next triangle here, the 30-60-90 triangle. So I didn't draw it yet because I'm going to show you how to construct this triangle. It's interesting, I promise you, and it's going to do you a lot of good to memorize this one. So we're going to take an equilateral triangle. That means that each of these is going to be 60 degrees and we're going to give each side a length of 2. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to chop it right down the middle. So when we chop it right down the middle, we end up with this remaining triangle here, and the 60 degrees in the corner doesn't change. 
We have a 90 degree angle at the bottom because we cut it straight down the middle. This one side up here, the hypotenuse, is still going to be 2 because we haven't changed that. But this bottom is going to be side length 1 because we're cutting 2 in half. So now we can deduce that the remaining angle up here is going to be 30 degrees. And using the Pythagoras theorem, we get that this length here is going to be the square root of 2 squared minus 1 squared, which is just equal to the square root of 3. And this is our 60, 30, 90 triangle. So again, remembering how to construct it and get the resulting triangle is going to be a lot more efficient than just memorizing these answers. But we can do some more things here. So sine of 30 degrees, cosine of 30 degrees, and tangent of 30 degrees. We can now figure these out. So sine of 30 is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that's going to be 1 half. The cosine of 30 is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, which will be root 3 over 2. And the tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is going to be 1 over, oops, 1 over root 3. So this is the 30 degree part. But now, of course, we can do 60 degrees as well. In fact, you have to know both of these. So here's 60 degrees of sine, cosine, and tangent. So now 60 degrees is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So that's going to be root 3 over 2. Of course, for some reason, this portion of the tablet does not like to function very nicely. Cosine of 60 degrees is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 1 over 2. And tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is just root 3 over 1. As you can see, the sine 30 and cosine 60 are the same, and cosine 30 sine 60 are the same. This is true from other things in trig, which you've probably discussed in grade 10. But anyways, that is the second triangle. So those are the two triangles that you need to know inside and out. Just practice writing them over and over again. Get those triangles into your head. There are some applications we can do here. So let's do some of this. We need to find x here. And we're given one angle and one side length. So what connects these? Well, we can say that, okay, we have 45 degrees come out here. We have an adjacent here, and we have the hypotenuse here. So what is adjacent over hypotenuse? Well, that's cosine. So cosine of 45 degrees is going to be equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 25 over x. So cosine 45 degrees is 25 over x. We know that. So now we want to solve for x. We could punch this into a calculator, but what we could do instead is remember that cosine of 45 degrees, let's draw a little triangle here. So we have a 1, 1, root 2 triangle, and here's a 45 degree angle down there. So cosine of 45 degrees is going to be 1 over root 2. So, cosine of 45 degrees is 25 over x, and cosine of 45 degrees is equal to 1 over root 2. So, 25 over x is equal to 1 over root 2. And now we can do some multiplication here. So we can multiply root 2 by 25 and x by 1. So we get 25 times root 2 is equal to x, and there you go. You have now solved it. You did not need to plug anything into your calculator. Instead, you just used similar triangles and similar values to solve this. All right, let's try another one. We have, okay, so we have our angle. 
we have an opposite, and we have a hypotenuse. Now, what links all of these together? Well, that's going to be sine. So sine of 60 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So that's x over 30. And again, we're going to construct a similar triangle here. So we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle here. So this is going to be 60, this is 30, this is 1, 2, and root 3. When you do this a million times, eventually you'll just memorize the triangle. Sadly enough, even I haven't memorized all the values of these triangles, but I know the triangles, so I can figure them out if I need to. So opposite over hypotenuse is going to be root 3 over 2. So now we know that these two values are going to be equal to each other. So x over 30 is going to be equal to root 3 over 2. We can now do some multiplying, so we can multiply both sides by 30, and we'll get x is equal to 30 times root 3 over 2, and when we simplify this, we'll get 15 root 3. So there is our answer. Again, no calculator needed. Let's do one more for practice here. Again, let's find out what we have here. We have the angle, we have an opposite, and we have an adjacent. There are two ways you could do this. We also see that we could have 60 degrees down here. So if you wanted to, you could do it with 60 degrees instead of 30 degrees. But let's do it with 30 degrees. So we have the tangent of 30 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent. So this is equal to x over 14. And based on similar triangles, that we have here. So this is 60, 30, 2, 1, root 3. Tangent of 30 is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is going to be equal to 1 over root 3. So we know that x over 14 is equal to 1 over root 3, so we can write this out. And we're going to get that x is equal to 14 over root 3. And again, we just multiply both sides by 14, and we're good. So, there you have it. There's the special triangles. I highly, 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 highly encourage you to remember how to draw each of these. So again, we'll go through this one more time. For the 45 degrees, we start out with a right angle. We give both of the lengths uh, side, le both of the sides length one. We then complete the hypotenuse, and because the lengths are the same, the angles must be the same. So there's 90 degrees left between the two. So each of these must be 45 degrees, and then by Pythagoras theorem, we get the remaining side is root two. With the 30, 60, 90 triangle, we take the triangle with all equal angles and sides 2. We then cut it right down the middle. So this leaves us with remaining 30 degrees up at the top, 60 degrees at the bottom, 90 degree angle down here. We cut this length into 1. This stays as 2 at the top. And by Pythagoras, the remaining angle is side of root 3. So that is how you construct the two triangles. Remember the process, remember the values, and that way you don't have to memorize a long table of trig values. And that's going to be much easier in the long run than memorizing a table of, what's that, like 30-something values. Because here's a little hint, here's something we did. We just did 30, 60, and... 45 degrees. This is what we did in this video for sine, cosine, and tangent. So we did approximately nine values. Now what we haven't done yet is zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees. So we haven't done those yet. Those aren't that bad. 
But the ones that do get kind of bad are when we do 120 degrees, 135 degrees, 150 degrees, 225 degrees, and so on and so forth. Because each of these are going to be a different value. So we have nine different values for quadrant two, nine different values for quadrant three, nine different values for quadrant four, and they're all just a little bit different. So if you memorize the process as opposed to memorizing the values, you're going to be much, much better off. Trust me. So if you have any questions, um, leave them down below and I will answer them as soon as I possibly can. So as always, thanks for watching. If you do enjoy the videos, uh, share them on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I don't know why you do it on Instagram, but that, that's always cool too. So thanks a lot. See you guys next time.